Hello music learners, welcome to my video about intervals. Today you're going to learn everything you need to know about intervals, tones and semitones and much more. If you want you can get a free ebook so that you can watch the video and read the ebook at the same time. To have it click on the link below or sign up to my newsletter to receive this ebook and many others. Hello, my name is Rossella and I am your Italian music teacher. You can visit my website, the link is below. You can also find me on TikTok, Instagram and of course YouTube. Sign up to my newsletter to receive free teaching and learning material and to be part of the Theory Virtuoso community. If you're preparing for a grade 5 or grade 4 or grade 3 music exam, you might be interested in my courses, the link is below. There are courses about terms and signs, but also a fast track to the grade 5 theory exam is worth looking at it. Shall we start? An interval is the distance between two notes. So we measure it like the distance between London and Manchester or between Paris and Ankara. The distance is measured through tones and semitones. So what are they? A semitone is the shortest distance between two notes. For example, this because there's nothing in between. A tone is two semitones. That's it. It is as easy as this. For example, this is a tone or this is a tone. You can watch this video to know more about this. I link it above or below. Now, we said that an interval is the distance between two notes and we measure it with a sequence of tones and semitones. The first thing that we need to do to measure an interval is to count the number of steps between the first note and the second note and be aware that an interval can be measured on the way up or on the way down, it's the same. In the grade five music theory exam, they ask you to measure the intervals that go just up, but it doesn't matter. The first thing that we need to do, I said, is to count the number of steps. So for example, this interval, D, F, is a third because there are three steps. Now we don't say three, but we say third with a cardinal number. This is very important because you might lose marks if you call it three instead of third, especially in the higher grades exam. So this is a third. Now what type of third is this? The types are linked to the number. So for example, a second can only be a, of a certain type and the fourth of another type. How do we know this? We need to remember it. There are two types of intervals major and perfect. The major intervals are only seconds, thirds, sixths and sevenths. The perfect intervals are unisons, fourths, fifths and octaves. That's it. And you need to remember this. But don't worry, I've got cheat sheets for you and you can get them if you get the ebook or sign up to my newsletter because I'm sending them through my newsletter completely for free. So a third, we said, can only be major. But we need to remember now how many tones and semitones a major interval has. Look at this and you can see that a second can only be major if it has one tone. A third is major when it has two tones. Then we have a fourth, two and a half tones. A fifth, three and a half tones. And a sixth, four and a half tones a seven, five and a half tones, an octave, six tones. You can remember this or you can just remember from the second to the fifth and then I'll tell you how to count the sixth and seventh because I have discovered a method that is so cool. Stay with me and I'll tell you in a second. So a third to be major needs to have two tones. Now we go back to our interval D, F, Re, Fa and then we count the number of tones and semitones on a keyboard or whatever you want. You can draw the keyboard, you can get it for free through my newsletter, you can also go onto the piano, although for the music theory exam you can't have a piano keyboard in front of you, but you can draw it. Then you count step by step and see how many tones and semitones this third has. Let's do it. We have one tone from D to E and then we have one semitone only from E to F. So we have one and a half tones. So what do we do now? This is not major. So what is this interval? I'll tell you in a second. This interval is minor because a major interval minus one semitone becomes minor. A perfect interval minus one semitone becomes diminished. A major interval plus one semitone becomes augmented. A perfect interval plus one semitone becomes augmented. So you need to remember augmented, augmented, minor, diminished. Easy peasy. 
There is a case in which we can add a ton or take a ton away from the interval. And in my ebook, everything is explained in details. For now, I'll tell you that it's called a doubly augmented or doubly diminished. But these cases are more rare for the grade five theory exam, not in music. So anyway, this major interval has one semitone missing. So it's not major, but minor. Now you know it. Let's go on to another interval, a perfect interval. For example, re. La. It's an interval of fifth. So what do we do now? We counted the steps and there are five. So this is a fifth. Now, what type of fifth? Perfect or augmented or diminished? We need to count the number of tones and semitones. And if we count them, pause the video and count them. If you counted three and a half, you were right. So this is a perfect interval. Now, imagine that one of the notes gets further away, for example, not Re or La, D and A, but D flat, A. In this case, the interval becomes bigger. So we enlarged it, we augmented it. So the interval is augmented. But if this is the perfect interval and we reduce the distance, we make it diminished. So for example, D, A flat becomes diminished. So the fifth is diminished. Now you know it. Let's talk about the sixths and sevenths. For identifying the sixths and sevenths, I have the best method ever. And it's easier than anything else. As we said, you can count the number of intervals and you can check if they are four and a half or five and a half tones. But the more steps you do, the more likely we are to make mistakes. So to avoid it, here's what you need to do. You need to flip over the interval to reverse it. So, for example, instead of Re, B, Re, uh, D, B, Re, C, it's an interval of a sixth. But what type? Is it major, minor, augmented, diminished? What is it? So, we reverse the interval. For example, B, we put it down of an octave or we raise up D an octave higher. And we find an interval of a third. Now, what type of third is it? B, D is a minor third because it has a tone and a half only instead of two. A minor third flipped over again becomes the opposite. A major sixth. Because a sixth becomes a third, a seventh becomes a second, a major becomes minor and diminished becomes augmented. For example, this interval here, C, B. It's a seventh because do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, seven notes. So it's a seventh. So if we flip it over, we find this second, B, C. Just one step. This is a minor second because it's made up of only one semitone instead of a tone. So a second is minor in this case. And if we flip it over, it minor becomes major, second becomes seventh. So it's a major seventh. There you go. Now you know it. Easy. And now a question that I receive all the time. For example, look at this interval. This is E flat and A double flat, which is in fact G. Why can't we call this A, fl a double flat G instead of A double flat? If we call this note G, the interval will be of a third. If we call this note A double flat, the interval is a fourth. What does that mean? It means that the chord that these two notes form will be different. If we change the chord, we change the harmony. So the path of the song, of the piece, of music, will be completely different. When we change the names of the notes, we change the chords. If we change the chords, we change everything. So in a composition, it is important to follow the path that the composer wanted to be. So we cannot combine chords randomly, but there has to be a sequence that makes sense and then expresses the feelings and the artistic needs of a composer. So we need to keep the chords with the names that they have and the notes need to reflect that. Now you know it. If you have questions, let me know. But in the ebook, this is explained in detail. The last thing that I want to tell you is about the compound intervals. What is a compound interval? It is an interval that is uh, longer than an octave. So we call it compound. How do we identify compound intervals? Easy peasy. We make it simple by uh, reducing one of the notes an octave lower or putting it up of an octave. So we make it shorter within the octave. We make it simple. We identify it. And then we either add the name compound to what we find or 
We keep the type and we add seven to the number that we find. For example, this is a major third, D, F sharp, simple. If F were an octave higher, it is a compound interval. So this interval could be called a compound major third or a major tenth, because it's three plus seven, ten. Easy. If you need to identify a compound interval, first make it simple. So put one of the notes, either an octave down or an octave up. Identify the interval and then we'll see it together. For example, let's identify this interval here. C, F sharp. First we put F down just because I want to remain within the stave, but it's irrelevant. You can put C up. Then this is a fourth. Do, re, mi, fa. It's a fourth. To be perfect, a fourth needs to have two and a half tones. We check and we find that this is actually three tones. So what do we do now? It's not perfect, but it's a little bit bigger. So it's, try to guess. If you said augmented, you were right. So it's an augmented fourth. Now let's remember that we have to identify a compound interval. So our F sharp is actually an octave higher. So our augmented fourth can either become a compound augmented fourth, or can you guess? an augmented 11th. Did you guess it right? Let me know it in the comments below. I hope this was useful. Have you got the ebook with you? If not, get it now before it's too late. The ebooks are for free for the first month and then you can find them in my website. Sign up to my newsletter to receive ebooks, free cheat sheets and much more. In the ebook, you also have quick tasks and a final test to revise your knowledge, a manuscript for your notes and much more. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!